What's going on guys, Joe with OMGRC here. So today I was contacted by Banggood again to do another review by Kiddo Pan. So big shout out to you man for uh, contacting me and uh, giving me the opportunity also to all my OMGRC subscribers, leaving those comments, those thumbs up. Uh, we're over 1500 so I definitely appreciate that one a lot more than what I thought was gonna be in this year. So awesome. So all right, so let's get into what we have here. So. First things first, this is a one-tenth scale. This is from ZD Racing, and it's the Thunder ZTX-10. So it is a one-tenth scale, it is a kit, so there's things that you're gonna need. All your electronics, nothing comes with it other than the fact that what you're gonna see in the box here. So I'm gonna try out these electronics. These are all the tracks of stuff that, basically what I pulled out of my uh, Rustler 4x4. So in case some of you guys were wondering, like, why did you pull that out? That's what I want, I just wanna try that, see how this gonna work with this, something different. So without further ado, let's get into the box. All right guys, so before I get started with this, I wanna let you guys know too, is that if you're interested in it, I'll put a link in the description below, and also if you download the Banggood app, you can save yourself an extra 10%. So there you go, I am working to get a, an OMG RC code for you guys, but as of right now, that's the only way you can save it if you go ahead and download the application. So anyway, let's get started. Okay, so uh, in kind of checking everything over, which I recommend you do as well, anything that seems to be out of the ordinary, check it. Now, what I was doing here, I was checking to make sure everything spins freely. And this particular side here, every time even the suspension went up and down, it would start to rotate the drive shaft that's there, or the universal drive. So what I had to do, I'm gonna go ahead and flip over to the page and kind of so I can show you a little bit uh, the part. So if you look here, this is the actual part, what it is. Once you take all this assembly off, you'll see this little hub that's there. Um, what was happening is how this drive shaft goes into this little cup, hub, what have you, uh, it, would, it would start to bind. What it was, there was a little bit too much material that was on the inside of it. So what I used was just a little bit of sandpaper. This is 80 grit and just kind of cleaned it up on the inside of it. And that way everything's nice and smooth because like that. I do have some marine grease. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of grease just in the diff. And I'll also I'm gonna go ahead and cut these right now because these are gonna be in the way to put this on the chassis. So these little, there's like little tabs that are here. So those little tabs that are right there, they need to go here. And the problem is, is those little, this big tab right here will be in the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. Um, so I'll start assembling that one. I'm gonna go ahead and if there's something I run into, I'll let you, I'll stop it and let you guys know. All right, so again, still trying to build this thing, but I gotta give you guys some insight on this too, which would be, I'm gonna go and kind of move this over a little bit, is right here where they're telling you to assemble everything and they're telling you two grub screws and they have like a little arrow and it's kind of pointing to the back of where the spur gear goes. So that would be this here and you can see both sides of it are there's no threading on it right okay so on this piece here no threading on that side you can see nothing now you can see in here you can see the threads in there all right so the pit the manual says that you need two grub screws to go into it but clearly that is not correct now once you mesh these two up they go in they use this tiny little grub screw right here little guy I'm not gonna use that one why because it's not gonna bite into this thing in my opinion enough so I'm gonna use this long grub screw here this was out of a stay here buddy this one here was out of what is that the uh, Red Cat Everest 10 you can modify it. You can find your own little grub screw for it. You know, really, I really need to kind of grind that down a little bit. But for right now, just in case there's any issues, I'm going to leave it as it is. And But just want to kind of give you guys an FYI on that part of it as well.
Okay, gonna give you guys a little bit of a heads up as far as I just installed this off camera, unfortunately. I just did it, but uh, I wanna kinda give you an FYI too, as far as my shocks, when I received them, they, were, they seemed to be okay, but when I pulled down just on the suspension a little bit, they stripped right out as far as on the shock shaft. So all I did was put a little bit of glue. I just used a little, actually a little CA glue. A piece here stripped that uh, goes into the shock shaft itself. So I just used, like I said, a little CA glue and everything's all good on that part. Zero everything out, meaning that I put the radio onto zero. Just like if you had this radio, for instance, just put it on zero that way. And then go ahead, try to line up your steering as best as possible here. And then go ahead and screw that down as far as to your, you know, your servo arm to the servo. So, yep, that's that on that part of it. That's what I've done. So I'm going to go ahead, time lapse the rest of it. I'll go ahead and install the electronics. I did make a little slit into this rubber. This rubber is what, so all the wires are going to go, see, I kind of show you a little bit here too. They're going to go up and into this box like so. So they'll go up and feed into the box. So what all I did was I just made a little slit in this piece of rubber just to try to keep it as, let's say, water resistant as possible. So just a little slit there. So, yep. So we got it powered on, so we're good on that part of it. All right, guys, so what do you think about this? This looks pretty cool. I mean, just on the way it looks visually, I think it looks really cool. I like it, I like the black, the red, the flames that are in there. The stickers, I didn't put a lot of stickers on there, just enough to kind of you know, do it in as far as with the window since they're already blacked out. Anyhow, the front looks pretty cool. It looks kind of habao looking with the way the lights are. Um, now, as far I'm gonna have a running video and I'll have more of a review on this as as it evolves, more or less, as, as I drive it and kind of get more familiar as far as the the quirkiness of it or so. Uh, there is one thing like you can see right here. I'm not doing much. I'm just maybe you can see it or not, but you can see this thing flexes quite a bit, right? Now, it concerned me, and it still does a little bit for sure. The, the, the chassis is not thick at all. There's not like a lot of reinforcement. So what I'll probably end up doing is making some kind of piece out of aluminum to give me myself a little bit more of you know, the chassis brace there because this brace here, not really a brace. It, if it would have been good if it was made out of the same plastic as this piece here, which obviously if you have one, you'll understand this is definitely a more dense, harder plastic than this soft plastic that's here. The soft plastic's the same plastic that's made for the chassis too. So, I mean, you can see right here how much I can, I can flex that quite a bit just by there. So, you know, give it for what it is. Um, I'll have more on this anyhow in and see how it really drives anyhow. Now, this is on a 2S LiPo and that's probably pretty much where I'm gonna probably leave it for the time being. It does have 48 pitch in there and I didn't, didn't show you in the video, but there's like there's a gear cover that goes over obviously the gears but it's very dark right there let me see if i can shine a little light in there you can kind of see the little gear a little bit right there well this traxxas motor this 550 can that's in here it has a longer shaft that's on it 
so it sticks out further than the actual case that was given so I just had to use a Dremel and cut that out. I not have the same issue or anything like that so to each their own so I didn't really kind of show that because I don't want to get into anything like that I just want to kind of keep it as simple as I can but kind of get, be informative on that part of it so anyway stay tuned for more and don't forget to like comment subscribe and share this with your friends if you like the video and until next time this is Joe with OMGRC you guys take care thank you for watching